Hi, my name is Matthew Maciejewski. I'm a graduate student at Johns Hopkins University and will be presenting work conducted during an internship at Mitsubishi Electric Research Laboratories. The work I will be presenting is called WAMR, Noisy and Reverberant Single Channel Speech Separation. What is speech separation? This is the task of taking a recording where multiple people are speaking simultaneously and producing a clean recording for each of those speakers. So, why whammer? What is the motivation for our work? In many real-world situations involving overlapping speech, there's more than just the speakers present. For example, there may be noise. Or, as the audio bounces off the walls, we have reverberation as well. In virtually all prior deep learning-based speech separation studies, only the first case has been considered. Noise and reverberation are likely to degrade the performance of such systems, as they rely on the spectral structure of speech, which is degraded by noise and smeared by reverberation. The goal of our work is to allow for the training and evaluation of speech separation systems in noisy and reverberant conditions, as well as establish the performance of these systems in these conditions. Here are two pre-existing MERL datasets. The first is the Wall Street Journal mixture dataset. This is synthetic mixtures created using the Wall Street Journal corpus. This corpus has studio recordings of red speech. The Wall Street Journal mixture dataset is a standard corpus used in speech separation and has been used in virtually all studies since it was released nearly five years ago. More recently, Merle released the WAM dataset in collaboration with Whisper AI. This is the Wall Street Journal mixture dataset, but it has been augmented with noise recorded from real environments. The noises were recorded in coffee shops, restaurants, and bars throughout San Francisco. This brings us to our new dataset, the WAMR dataset. This is WAM that has been augmented with synthetic reverberation. Sources were convolved with room impulse responses generated using the image source method. The parameters of these rooms were randomly generated to roughly match the noise recordings. The WAMR dataset includes all combinations of sources, noise, and reverberation, allowing for a wide variety of training and evaluation conditions. As a result, we've defined four core separation conditions of the WAMR dataset. In all cases, the targets are the same, namely clean, anechoic sources. This allows for fair comparisons across the conditions. The first condition is the clean condition, with neither noise or reverberation. This is equivalent to the original Wall Street Journal mixture dataset. The noisy condition is equivalent to the WAM dataset, where we have the same mixtures but now with noise added. The first new condition is the reverberate condition. This is the Wall Street Journal mixtures again, but this time with reverberation added. Finally, We've introduced the noisy and reverberant condition, which is the same mixtures yet again, this time with both noise and reverberation added. In our experiments, our models fall under the same basic paradigm. There's first paired transforms between waveform and time frequency spectral domain, as well as an internal network which produces a spectral mask which suppresses the interfering sources or noise or reverberation. The basic framework for this is to first take the waveform, put it into a spectral feature transform, and project it into a spectral representation. We then take the spectral representation and feed it into a network which produces a mask. This mask is then multiplied onto the original spectral representation which can then be inverted to produce a waveform of the estimated source. In our experiments, we evaluated two feature transformations as well as two internal mask production architectures. For our feature transformations, 
we evaluated both a standard short-time Fourier transform as well as a TASNET-style sliding window learned basis projection. For the internal mask production architectures, we evaluated both temporal convolutional networks as well as bidirectional LSTMs. In all cases, the models were trained using scale invariant signal to distortion ratio loss. Here are the results of all four core separation conditions using a single model. The two highlighted rows represent new conditions to WAMR. The input column represents the SDR of the raw condition without any processing. This gives us an idea of how difficult the starting point is. In terms of network output, we report two results, the output column and the delta column. The output is the raw SDR. Since all four conditions have the same target, the output SDR is a somewhat objective quality in which we can compare how the audio sounds across conditions. The delta column is the output minus the input, which represents the improvement that the network has done to the audio signals. For our experiments, we evaluated both ConvTasnet and TasNet BLSTM. These are both learned basis methods, with the difference using either the TCN or the BLSTM for its internal processing. Our experiments showed that the TASNet BLSTM outperformed ConvTasnet by roughly 1 dB in all conditions. In addition, we have demonstrated that noise and reverberation does degrade the performance, with reverberation being more harmful than noise. Another core component of our experiments were evaluating something we call cascaded systems. Here's an example of a cascaded system. We first take a noisy and reverberant two-speaker mixture, put it into an enhancement network which is trained to remove the noise from such mixtures. We then take the resulting reverberant mixture and feed it into a separation network which produces two reverberant sources. We take these reverberant sources and pass them through an enhancement network which removes the reverberation from a single source, which results in our final clean, separated, anechoic speech. An overview of the cascaded systems is that we pre-train separate models for each subtask, which include things like separation with noisier reverberant targets or enhancement of overlapping speech. We then take the appropriate submodels and cascade them together to solve the final core condition task. As part of these experiments, we wanted to evaluate the best model configuration for enhancement. Here are results for both denoising and dereverberation of mixed speech. In addition, we evaluate all four combinations of the features and processors. Here we find that the learned basis outperforms the STFT by a reasonable margin, which is consistent with the results that have been established in the separation community. In addition, we found that the BLSTM outperforms the TCN by a small margin, which is consistent with our earlier experiments on separation. Another important part of the cascaded systems is the use of a rescaling factor in between each model. Since the models are trained with a scale invariant loss, this is absolutely necessary. Since the models have no reason to produce any particular dynamic range, there would then be a mismatch from one model to the next. As a result, we rescale the estimated source such that it is orthogonal to the residual. We are required to use the mixture as reference as the oracle is unknown. Here are results of the cascaded models in noisy separation. The first row is our baseline case where we remove the noise as part of the separation system. The second row is one where we remove the noise prior to separation. We find that using pre-separation enhancement, we're able to improve the performance on noisy separation. Here are the results of the cascaded models on reverberant separation. Here we have our baseline in the first row where we remove reverberation as part of separation. 
After that, we remove reverberation before separation, as well as reverberation after separation. We find that removing reverberation after separation to be the best performing configuration. We believe that this is the case because the network only has to deal with one impulse response at a time. Here are the results of the cascaded models on noisy and reverberant separation. We have all configurations reported here, but our ultimate result is that removing noise prior to separation and removing reverberation after separation is the best performing configuration, resulting in a gain of roughly 1 dB over the baseline where both noise and reverberation are removed as part of the separation itself. Finally, we evaluated tuning of the cascaded systems. Since all of the subtasks are end-to-end, -end, we can combine them and train the whole model at once. And we use these additional training epochs to train the end-to-end -end system and tune the cascaded system. Here are the results of tuning our cascaded systems. The first column of results, labeled best system without tuning, are simply the numbers from the previous slide that were the highest performing systems. To the right of that are the tuned models. We find that these additional training epochs do improve performance by roughly half a dB. In conclusion, we've introduced a new speech separation dataset which features added noise and reverberation, extending the conditions in which we can evaluate speech separation systems. In addition, we have results supporting that learned basis features outperform STFT on these mass-based methods. In addition, we have evidence supporting that BLSTMs outperform the TCNs. Finally, we've demonstrated that splitting noisy and reverberant separation into subtasks where we first remove noise, then separate, and then remove the reverberation improves performance on the overall task. Finally, the data and creation scripts are available at the link. Thank you.